In June of 2023, several San Antonio actors and producers were invited to a production meeting hosted by Brett Mauser, the owner of Not So Sane Entertainment. Now, Brett has written and directed over 40 feature films, has seen his projects on blockbuster shelves, Netflix, Amazon, and Tubi. And now, he's about to embark on a new project, one that is both entertaining and educational. I begin by thanking everybody for coming out and participating today. What I want to do is I want to show people you can make a movie for no money. If anyone knows Film Threat, one of their shorts popped up, and it was uh, Chris Gore, who's the guy who runs Film Threat, uh, just kind of saying, hey, you can tell your story. Anyone here in our audience could make a movie. You think it's out of your reach. I, I know, like, look, there's a lot of armchair quarterbacks, right? Say, look, I could be a better quarterback than Tom Brady. Uh, you probably can't. Whether you're covering or you're just a fan, that's how everybody started was as was as a fan of films, passionate about films. Anyone in this audience could go and make their own movie. I don't do it very often, but I read the comments. It was people saying, oh, well, I don't have time to do that. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I've got a screenplay. Anybody want to anybody shoot it? And to me, it frustrated me. It, it, and, and, and it kind of angered me a little bit because I think that a lot of independent filmmakers out there think that they're going to go and they're going to make the next Marvel movie or they're going to make the next Indiana Jones. Uh, so they're waiting until they have the right amount of money or the right amount of resources or whatever. And I've always said this from what went wrong to a lot of, the, you know, to my book. Okay, let's say one day you do get that million dollar budget. You're not going to have any clue what to do with it. You're not going to have any idea. So I want to inspire people to go out and make a movie. And, 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 and there may be people that says, well, yeah, but it's not going to be any good. No, of course it's not going to be any good. But you've done it and you've got it under your belt. If you attempt to make this, you know, a movie for a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks, then it may not be that great of a movie and you may be ashamed of it. So don't release it. And you don't even have to show it. If it's a piece of crap, I mean, Serial Rabbit yeah. is a prime example. We can look back at Serial Rabbit and be proud that, hey, we did this. I, I wrote this script in a day, you know, one night. We had five days to shoot it. We knocked it out. We were proud of it the first day we, we finished it. But then, you know, by a year later, we were like, yes. but we, you know, but so no one's ever going to see it again. But it's part of our history. We learned on that. And it was important to do that. But you still may want to release it because it's a good idea to get used to those negative comments. You know, you got to thicken your skin because when you put something on YouTube or Netflix or whatever, you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to get some hate and you need to thicken your skin and, and get used to that negative criticism. A lot of people get, fall in love with the idea of making a movie, but it's hard to get the commitment part and finish it off. Most of the time, people want to create the perfect film. So they think that they're going to need to get educated by reading books or watching one more YouTube video, or they try to get too prepared and they don't do it. They just can keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, and they never apply that knowledge. Uh, I can understand that, but I think you should be doing both at the same time. When I'm teaching college, we're giving a lesson, then we're sending the student out to go and do it. And that's how you're going to learn. You know, if you just get all this information and pack it into your head, and then 10 years later, then you go and you do something, you're gonna forget about all that stuff. And it's not, it's, it hasn't been drilled into you. So you, you need to learn, then do. Learn, then do. Learn, then do. You're never going to be ready. You're never going to know everything. Sit down, plot it out, do it. The purpose of this series is to inspire people to be able to go out and make their own film not to be afraid of it, not to be scared of it, not to be so paranoid about, oh, it's not gonna be great, it's not gonna be perfect. No, but go out and do it, have a good time, and learn. Going from thought to finished product on a low budget. The original idea was to do it for a thousand bucks. And I can do it for a thousand bucks. However, because we are where we are, I have to get insurance and I have to get these, these other little things that, that, that tack on and to, you know, to protect us. So I am putting it in as a $2,000 movie. I also want this to be an educational experience for everybody to see how we do it because there's, um, there's a lot of people that try that, that, that just see us making movies and they don't see all the behind the scenes stuff. 
They don't see how we do different things. How we just rehearse real quick before a scene, shoot it, and we're on to the next thing. How we shoot so fast. Because I'll guarantee you a lot of people are gonna watch this going, I never thought about shooting it that way. Same thing with the post-production. I never thought about editing it that way. Uh, which is one of the reasons, because everyone always says, how do you get a trailer up an hour after you get home the night? Because I do things that you're not, the way you're not supposed to. But I also think it's important to share the why you do things. Not just how you do it, but why did you get insurance? Like, and where did you get the insurance? And what does that mean? You know, I think, so we're going to do it. Here's the business reasons. But here's how you go about doing it. Because that's the question I get a lot was, okay, but how did you do that? And why, did, what, what, why do you do it? And that's why this is really, really important to, to get across to, to filmmakers out there. That this style of filmmaking is to tell your story and to learn. If you're trying to make money and you want to be a Hollywood, you know, you think this is going to be a big Hollywood film and that you're going to be the next Robert Rodriguez and this is going to be your El Mariachi, no. That's not what this is. Your first film has to be about and for you, yourself, to learn. Do I want to do this? Am I any good at this? Do I feel I could become better at this? Do I feel like I could be good at this? I am by no stretch of the imagination a natural at filmmaking. You look at, you look at my first films and you know, all the way up to a few years ago, some of them weren't even watchable, but I learned and I had to grow as a filmmaker. Now, some people can step in front of a, you know, step behind a camera, and have it like this. Well, if you're, if you're not, if you're expecting the world that first time, then man, you're not gonna, there's not gonna be a second. Imagine a roulette wheel. Now, half of those spots, if it lands, you're gonna earn nothing to $300. Another large majority of that, you're gonna, learn, you're gonna earn $300 to $1,500 if, if, you, if your number comes up. On two of those numbers, you may be able to make $20,000. On one number, you'll make between fifty dollars and $150,000. You get to pick one number. How much are you going to wager on that spin of the roulette wheel? And that's what you need to consider when you're making your independent film and how much money you're going to put into it. Because most independent films, even if you have a name in them sometimes, most independent films are only going to make that zero nothing to $1,500. Very, very small few will make twenty dollars to $150,000. And you have to be aware of that. So if you're aware of that, then it's just about numbers and, 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 and thinking about how much money you're going to invest and you're going to gamble that you're going to make that money back. The first thing you have to do when you decide you're going to make a movie the very first thing is decide, are you doing this to tell a story and to express yourself, or are you doing it to make money? Because every question, every decision that pops up in your, in your project from, from, from the beginning of production to the end of production is determined on those two factors. Are you just doing it to make money, or are you trying to be a, 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 an artist expressing yourself and, and doing this to tell a story? If you're going to make money, you have got, your talent is probably the most important thing in, in several aspects of that, whether they're any good uh, and how they look. And I'm going to, and I'm going to piss a lot of people off, especially some college professors that I had. When you are shooting a heist movie, you want to be in Italy in Spain or a spy movie, you're going to go to Russia. You don't want to be in downtown Corpus Christi. <laughs> it's like, eh, okay. okay. You want to go somewhere exotic. Yeah. You want to see things on the screen you don't get to see every day. True. That's the same for the actors. You don't want to see Betty from accounting on screen. Okay. You're expecting to see a fantasy world. You, it's an escape. Perfect. It's an escape. Everything's perfect. And that means the people too. Now, if you're making a movie for yourself, you can put whoever you want in it and you don't have to worry about the looks and, uh, and you go for what you want. 
because you're not trying to convince a, a distributor to buy your film. So you don't need those tens in your film. If you're going to do it like us, you get to be more, you get to try things. You get to try and do different things that are different and, and experiment and, and do things that, because serial rabbit movies are always what I call stream of consciousness movies. There is no outline, there is no plot. It is me sitting down at the computer and rocketing out a script of just the most absurd, ridiculous, crazy shit I can come up with. The old man said he ran over a six-foot rabbit about half an hour ago. Damn, they grow on tall out here in this country. That does not mean that you can't make a good movie. Vosat is one of my favorite movies and I think is one of my best films. But there's no plot at all. But I think it still carries all the way through from beginning to end. Because it's, it's interesting, the characters are great, and you're learning things as you go. So I want to draw those comparisons and explain, like you said, why we do different things, why we do things this way, and why they you know, do it on, on, on a Hollywood set. And it, I also want to do that so that you can kind of see that people keep saying, well, you need to have money, you need to have all this money to, to make a good Hollywood movie or a movie that's going to be at the level of Hollywood productions. But especially with some of our, for starting with like Lady Lawman and the films on after that, you got to look at those and go, well, how much more money do you really need to look like a Marvel movie, you know, or look like the next Indiana Jones movie? Not a lot. Money is going to allow you to get better talent. It's going to let you get better locations. It's going to let you get better equipment. It's going to let you uh, have a little bit more freedom. You're not going to compromise as much. But it doesn't necessarily lend itself to creativity because when a problem comes up, you just throw money at it and it goes away. When you don't have money, you have to solve things creatively. But money is 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 nice. It helps since we, you know I, I I wouldn't have said that four or five years ago because I was just so used to making no budget movies. But now that we've put some money behind our films and we've been able to get great locations like Moscow Movie Studio, The Buggy Barn, Pioneer Farms, these great locations, I've come to realize you know, money can be nice from time to time. Rabbit is back. It's a furry in real life. <laughs> mentioned in the email about Pseudo Rabbit 7. Yes, uh, I've just been bouncing around the ideas in my head and this one was gonna be a satire of AI. And it's gonna be set in the future in, in a dystopian world, you can't offend anybody anymore, so all the serial rabbits have been banned. But the way entertainment is done is there nobody makes movies anymore, it's all AI generated. Because you can go and go, hey, make me, a, I, wanna see a, I wanna see a horror film with Clint Eastwood and Humphrey Bogart uh, with this, this, and this. And then it makes this movie and you watch it and that's where it's headed. So I want to do that, but because AI gets its information and learns from the internet, it's very politically correct. So it's banned of, uh, offensive stuff. So he has to hack it and then therefore creates one of the most offensive movies. So it winds up being, the name of the movie is, is Serial Rabbit 7, the fourth one, because it's actually the fourth movie. But then the movie itself that he creates is Serial Rabbit 10, Critical Rabbit Theory. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about <laughs> Being offended is a choice. You choose to be offended. It gives you the opportunity to virtue signal. It's just, I'm better than the people that made this movie because I am above them when it comes to morality, ethics, and values. They're going to make fun of this person, or this idea, or this thing that happens in our society. I'm above that. So I'm not going to laugh, and I'm going to be offended, and I'm going to stand up for the people that this affects and this impacts. Forget, it. Forget about asking what the people who it actually impacts, what they actually think. Just because you have a camera doesn't mean you know how to tell a story. Yeah. You may have the best equipment in the world, but if you don't have a good story, then... If you shot shoot on a VHS camera, this story, and you're captivated by it, you're captivated by it, but you're like, yeah, but it's not a Hollywood movie. It's not a real movie. Well, what does that say about you as an audience member? Because you've just said that the only thing that makes a movie a good movie is what camera you use. That's not art. That's not filmmaking. That's not, you know, that, that, uh, business.
you know, you're seeing something shiny. You're just trying to get the most shiny, the shiniest thing. When we say we're shooting this for $2,500, we are using gear that we've we've purchased over the years. So in, in, a, in a very real sense, we are not spending money on our equipment and our gear because it's already been paid for. We own it. We have it. That's why I always recommend uh, buying your gear rather than renting it. It may be cheaper in the short term, but a five-day rental on equipment would buy the equipment. But the added benefit to that is once you've bought the equipment, it's yours and you can use it anytime. Uh, I can make a movie anytime I want because I own the gear. For somebody that's just starting out, you do have options. If you want to shoot on the gear that we, we shoot, ask around, get on Facebook groups, look for cinematographers, look for camera people that already have their gear and work out a deal and arrangement with them. Uh, especially people just starting out that, you know, and, and they have the gear just sitting around and they need to do something, but they're the, the camera guy. They're not the writer. They want to do something, you know, go out there and meet people, make arrangements, work deals, bargain, trade, barter. And barring that, shoot on your cell phone. If you need to shoot on your cell phone and that's the only thing you've got, use it. The very first cameras that I worked on were old VHS cameras, or I had a, my first Sony, which actually recorded on little audio cassette tapes. And it had a resolution of like 120 pixels and was black and white and was god awful, but I was still using that to shoot. My little stop motion G.I. Joe movies with my grandfather's camera that he left me was a little old super eight millimeter camera. I shot with whatever I could get my hands on. And if you can create some movies with whatever you, whether it's your cell phone, whether it's an old cinema camera, a little eight millimeter camera, you got at the pawn shop for 60 bucks, whatever you can shoot on. If you finish movies, you can show it to other people and they can say, hey, I want to work with you on your next movie. I've got a cinema camera. Let's get together and work on this. For this project, we are using very good equipment that we've bought over the years, but we're also going to be showing you how to use other items. We'll show you how much uh, a light kit costs, but we'll also show you the alternative that you can get for 10 or 15 bucks at Walmart. That's our first thing is let's decide what, you know, what, what, what the, 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 the general thing of what we're doing is. Well, my character didn't die, so she's still around. Both of them. Yes. So I think that Julia and Maggie are twins. We see their origin story and <laughs> they go from there. A horror film. No, I've been trying that before, but you just can't. Get I can't do it. I can't. I can't do a horror film. I just can't, can't. do a serious horror film. That always comes out funny. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's just, it's just who I am. It's just it's just my nature. I'm just not. Everybody's one of the ones that I talked about. Like what? Like like the the God captured one? Too complex, I think, for a for a two thousand dollar movie. I don't. I wouldn't even know where to get the chickens. Last part. <laughs> See, that right there just makes me want to know more. <laughs> when we break for the party, I'll let you. I'll let you pick, pick Sergio's. I've also thought about uh, some of the other uh, remakes of some of my shorts. Uh, I did a movie called The Specialist, which was Jade uh, planning a heist with the seven girls, and they all wind up killing themselves, and uh, that was a fun little project. Uh, I did a movie called The Strangers. You know, if anyone's seen any of my short films, I can revisit with those. If anyone's seen, well, it's the chair's already. I mean, it, the chair is the chair. Uh, I'm not going to turn that. Oh, in. It is. <laughs> That's great timing. Yeah. I product placement. <laughs> <laughs> great time. I was a chair operator. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go around the room with each person and s tell me something that you want to see in it. I always wanted to play a romantic movie. <laughs> you did. You were the chair. <laughs> you were the chair. <laughs> that wasn't very romantic. That was pure animal lust. Seeing that, that's awesome. What's going to give you the most content to use as a teaching tool? Well, that, whatever I want. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably Sierra Rabbit, because it would give us the... You could go all over the place with that. Yeah. 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 Y
place. You, yeah, you can go anywhere. And, anywhere. and I haven't done one, so I want to do this here. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to bring the wear cow in. I was thinking that we, if we could bring it into oh, that movie, we could fight him or, or, or it's his, the what? It's his buddy it's or something. Cow. I don't know. Cow? Yeah. Wear cow. I was going to bring the cereal rabbit. I was going to ready to go. Yeah. I think for the budget, cereal rabbit would probably give you the most leeway. <laughs> Sounds like that's what the answer is. Because I was going to say, what's going to give you the most content for what you're trying to accomplish with the teaching, with, with teaching content? So it sounds like cereal rabbit. Yep. Okay. All in favor of Sewer Rabbit? Yeah. What's up? Aye. Okay. All opposed? Motion passes. Sewer Rabbit it is, sir. Okay. With the wear cow. With the wear cow. Somewhere the wear cow is in there. That'd be cool. And so with that, the next Sewer Rabbit movie was put into production. Not So Sane Entertainment would attempt to make it for just $2,500, with a thousand of it going into insurance and legal fees. I think this was the best project, and, and, and Brett is the best position to show off how to film a, a, a film uh, under $1,000. He, he is so uh, efficient, and uh, he's able to wear all the different hats. He's the editor, the filmer, the, the, the filmmaker, the cinematographer. He also does you know audio. He, he does it all. So he's primed position to show off how this can be done. And it's not that difficult if you have the, the, the drive and the, the know-how, and he's showing you how to. We're, we're limiting ourselves on the resources that we have. We're not going to be, we're not, we're limited on the days of, that we're allowed to shoot. Uh, we're going to be rushed. We're going to be having to make a lot of compromises as opposed to being able to take the time instead of shooting this in, in, in 14 or 16 days, which I think would be a good day to, time to do this. I'm trying to get it down to six days. Right now we're at like nine or 10. That's going to hurt us. I want fog in every scene, but we're not going to be able to do that because I'm not going to have the time to have Joey run over there because he's going to be doing something else and he's going to have to So why, why do it? Because the project itself is to show people who don't have that time and don't have that money. If you've only got a thousand bucks or if you've only got 50 bucks, you can watch this series and see what we do and see that it's possible. Over the next several weeks, join this group of independent filmmakers as they prove it's possible to make a movie without breaking the bank. And along with producing the next Zero Rabbit sequel, this educational series will show you how you too can make a movie. Now through this series, we'll show you the different gear you can use, how to write and schedule your movie, how to shoot and edit it, and even how to distribute it. And maybe, just maybe, even make your money back. I'm Nikki Young, I hope you'll join us next time on Long Shot. And if you